Hi, everybody. My name is Jen Appleberry with Appleberry Zedek, and we are so excited that you are with us tonight. You are watching Crafting Live, Season 2, Episode 1, and our guest crafter is... Mr. Appleberry. How you doing, everybody? We are super excited to have you all here with us crafting. What I love about this Crafting Live segment is that you are able to connect and create with us right from your home. And so tonight, we are joining, um, or having you join us make the January Craft Crate. Now, if you're watching this and you are a subscriber to our monthly subscription box, then you know all about the Craft Crate. But if you're new to Appleberry's Attic, this is our monthly subscription box that you can pick up if you're local to Anoka, Minnesota, or if you are not local and you are in another state or another part of Minnesota, this is a box that we can ship out right to you so you don't have to miss another Crafting Live segment just sitting at home. You can craft live with us, do it hands-on, connecting, creating, yep. that's what we love. So tonight, without further ado, let me introduce to you, like I said, Mr. Appleberry. He is, honestly, what do I even say about Lauren here? So Lauren <laughs> is the face behind the name Appleberry. Yep. He is the face behind all of the lumber that is cut for this small business. He is, honestly, the face behind <laughs> what keeps Mama sane and level, yes? Well, I... If is that what you think? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I know, yes. Good. So, Lauren, why don't you tell everybody just a little bit about you? Let's do that first. Okay, well, uh, where do you start? The beginning, I grew up in Missouri, <laughs> and I, I grew up in a little farm town, and I've been a laborer pretty much my whole life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I like old trucks, tractors, and totally you know, all that stuff. Um, that's it. I met you and moved mm -hmm. up here and mm -hmm. my life has been fantastic ever since. Okay. Yeah. And so now you are Mr. Appleberry. You are husband. You are dad. How many kiddos do we have? We have three kids and oh. we have a, a live-in kid, an like extra. an honorary kid. That, so we'll call it three and a half. That yeah. seems fair. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Well, tonight I have asked you to be our guest crafter for the kickoff of season two because, well, not only are you, like I said, um, Mr. Appleberry, the other half, but when it comes to the January box, it is full of all things Valentine's Day. So we're really talking about love and connecting and being together and celebrating, well, not just Valentine's Day, but love in general. And so it really did make sense to have you as the guest crafter. Right. So are you ready to dive in and do some crafting? Let's do it. I'm all right, y'all. Okay, so we're gonna open up the January craft crate. Mm. And in here, you guys are gonna find some amazing things. So when you open it up, we wanna make sure that it's got a great presentation and it's like a gift. So you've got all your fun cards, um, your cute little card that you can put in your photo display board, chocolates, because who can craft without yeah. treats? There's chocolate in here. If you've yes. never got one, there's, hey, there's chocolate in have here. Have some chocolate. So. We'll let you have some of that tonight. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab out the supplies that we need for tonight. We are gonna be making the largest project in the box which is the Valentine's Mixtape sign. Now, I really did talk about giving a nod to nostalgia in this box. Let's move this out of the way if you would. I really am gonna have this chocolate. <laughs> He's already diving into treats, I love that. Okay, and then- When you open your box, out. grab a chocolate and eat it while you're going through all this cool stuff. <laughs> grab it right away. That's what it's there for. All right, so we have grabbed out the stencil, the board, and then all four pieces of the frame and the nails are attached to the frame, okay? Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna start off by doing, we're going to be painting our board and our frame. Now, do you wanna do the frame or do you wanna do the board? What do you think? I don't know. Let's put you to work. Let's have you do the frame. I'll do the frame, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna take off the nails. We're gonna need these later, so set them aside. And then we're gonna pass off the framing pieces to you. Perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and work with the board. Set your stencil off to the side for a little bit later. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the black foam brushes that were in your box. <clears throat> and then you've got um, clear cups over there, sir. Sure. So if you would grab them. Yep, you need one. I'll take one for me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and... You've got sandpaper, can I have a piece of that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Do a little sanding on your edges. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by painting our board white. Are you okay with this? We're making it together. Am I okay with it? Yeah. Are you well, okay with the board being white? 
Yeah. It's, Excellent. I mean, it's the, the best thing to do is make it white. Okay. No, so then what do you want the frame to be for our sign? So if mm. our board is white, then the frame I was thinking would be... Brown. Like a brown, yep. a brown with a little bit of gray. Yep. So let me tell the girls how to do that. So if you're okay. watching, I like to make paint look like stain. So a lot of times when you're crafting, you don't have time to work with stain and the dry time and the smell and all of that. So we like to, at Appleberry's Attic, work with paint and have it look like stain. Yep. The secret is actually to get paint to look like stain is water. So you're seeing me work with just traditional acrylic paint. Um, the color that I'm working with tonight is a brown and it's called Burnt Umber. I'm adding a little bit of gray to the brown because I don't want it to be really orangey brown. I want it to kind of be more of a rustic brown. Yes, do you muted, agree with yeah. that? Muted. Great yeah, word. muted brown. Yep. Okay, so after I get it to the color of my liking, then we're going to go ahead and add a splash of water. So I have a mason jar to the left of you, babe, if you would grab that. Got it. And you're going to add in just a splash of water. Okay. So not a drop, not a guzzle, just a splash. Just a splash. Oh, you did it. Good job. Okay, so now it's what I'm... not my first rodeo, you know. I've done this. <laughs> Good job, Lauren. Okay, so what I'm doing is you can kind of see that by adding water, I'm cutting down the pastiness of the paint, and I'm making it a little bit more fluid and easy to work with. Right. Okay? Yep. So I'm going to pass that off I'll to give you. you that one. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so you can go ahead and start off by painting that. I am going to give you a couple wet wipes because okay. I also love to wipe the paint off. Kind of think about it like stain. So yep. you're going to paint and then, yeah, okay, and then wipe a little off and then it looks just like stain, right? Yeah, so you don't need much with the water in it. It really mm -hmm. goes a long way. Yes, exactly. And you can just cover it as much as you can and then... Go from there. Yep, go from there. After you have that done, wipe it off and it's going to look like stain. It's going to show all that wood grain. Okay. And it looks awesome. Looks just like stain. I love that. You guys can see that. I don't know. Perfect. Yep. So it gives it just that nice wooden grain stain. Perfect. All right. So you're going to go ahead and paint all sides of your frame. Yep. The front, the back, the sides, the butt ends, everything. Every piece of that needs to be covered. I'm just going to go ahead and work on painting the surface of my board because then all of the sides will get covered with the frame. Okay? Sounds good. Excellent. So while we're painting and getting into crafting, I thought that we would start at the beginning. So you told everyone when you gave your little introduction that you grew up in Missouri. I true? Did. Yep, that is true. Okay. You grew up in Missouri and you kind of grew up in a small town, right? Very small. The biggest town in the county, and there was 4,000 people. <laughs> so, yeah, very small county, actually. Very small town, very small county. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years ago when Butler got a second stoplight. That was, <laughs> that was huge. There was, ac believe it or not, there was actually some traffic accidents <laughs> because of that. Because we don't know what to do when things change down there. It's just weird to us. So, so the second stoplight created some real anarchy, would you say? Yeah, we didn't like that at it all. It was, yeah. It was not acceptable. So you grew up on a farm, kind of small town, small town living. Yep. Um, what were some of the things that you did for fun? What were the, some of the things that you did for a job? Things of that nature. Well, <clears throat> wasn't there wasn't a lot of places to work in Butler. There was the lumber yard. There was a Walmart. Mm -hmm. Smallest Walmart you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Um. There was farming, always farming. You can get a job doing that. Did you do that? I did, yep. Yep. Yep, did a little bit of farming and um, worked at the lumber yard. Lots of, lots of just odds and ends stuff. Painted my neighbor's fence every year for money. <laughs> he, was the, uh, he was the family, the town doctor, and uh, I used to paint his fence every year, and it was a lot of fence. Have so, you worked on a farm where you birthed animals? Yep, done some birthing of some animals. I find that yeah. so intriguing. I don't know if I could do that. I think that that would be, I don't know. I don't want to say gross, but I, I just feel like it would be too high stakes for me. That would be intense. Yeah, it's actually really cool. But I would also would, think you, yes. Yeah, it's, it's really cool to see a baby calf come out. You stand it up right away and it's already walking. And, you know, that's Super that kind cool. of stuff is really cool. But. Super cool. Yeah. So you grew up in Missouri, but now you find yourself in Minnesota. 
kind of yep. two different states, right? <clears throat> yep, it's very, well, we live in the suburbs, but it's a lot more urban than what I'm used to, Ooh, and perfect. it's a lot colder than what I'm used to. <laughs> so. Every single winter, I do find myself apologizing to Lauren on just those cold, cold days. I yep. find myself saying, I am so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry because you do work out in the cold. So Appleberry's yep. Attic is obviously our small business mm -hmm. and this is something that Lauren does and helps with, but your main job is not this. Your main job is more a laborer in like steel and construction. Right. Yep. So I work at a place called Rebar Fab mm -hmm. and I do exactly what the name says. I fabricate rebar. Okay. And you do it in the so, cold. I, well, yeah, I do it. In, I'm, I'm fortunate enough. I've been there long enough to where they put me in a heated building. So. And when you say heated, you mean? <clears throat> well, I mean, it usually doesn't get much more than about 50 degrees in gotcha. there. Gotcha. So a little chilly, right? But yeah. So I apologize it's... every single day on those cold days that you are here in Minnesota where it's just a little chillier than what you're used to. Right, yep. So That's obviously, okay. I think everyone is going to wonder, okay, so if you grew up in Missouri, how on earth did you get to <laughs> Minnesota? So do you want to start off by telling how we met? I'll, in, I'll interject with a few of my points or my side of it, but you, you go ahead and you tell okay. everybody, how on earth did a boy from Missouri meet a girl in Minnesota and move right. up here? Okay, this is a... It's a very strange story. You know what I call it? I call it divine intervention. Yeah. Would you not agree that I feel like the Lord meant for us to meet? I believe that now. I used to think it was just weird, but I believe it now. <laughs> fair, but, fair. <clears throat> so, it yeah, is. it's a little strange, yeah. But so the deal is, is I, when I moved away from Butler and moved to Kansas City, mm -hmm. live in that big city life, which I hated, um, I had, the only car I had was a 1966 Ford Galaxy 500, mm -hmm. old Galaxy. And it was a pretty cool car, it was restored. It had a engine in it that had a, a certain type of water pump on it. Okay. And, <clears throat> excuse me, well, I was looking for a water pump for this thing, and it was, you can't just buy it at an auto parts store. Got to have a specific water pump. Right. So you're looking home from work one day, looking for this water pump. Correct. Yep. My, well, my sister says, why don't you go online and look for it? And honestly, I, this is 2002. 2002. Yep. So that's and I grew back up, before. Yeah. And I, where I grew up, it, there was no, like nobody had cell phone. Nobody had cell phones. Nobody had computers, really. I mean, they did, but yeah. nobody was super into that. So yep. I maybe been on the internet half a dozen times. At that point. Yep. And I really didn't know anything about chat rooms. Okay. Now, for all you youngsters <laughs> that are watching, <laughs> chat rooms were super popular back in that day, like late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. People would just get on and just start. It was a feed. And people would just chat with each other. I feel like, yes, if you are a younger demographic, you have no idea what a chat room is. If you are an yeah. older demographic, we need to see some hearts or likes in the comments because show us that you do remember or know what a chat room was, right? Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm on this site looking for a water pump for my car. Mm -hmm. And do you remember, I don't know if you guys remember, it was pop-ups pop were actually, that's exactly what they were, it was pop-ups. they pop up in the yep. middle of the screen, you'd have to close them out. Pop up, close them out. Well, I got this pop-up of justachat.com. It was a chat room. I didn't really know much about chat rooms. I thought that maybe it was possibly part of the website I was on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so I click on it. Because you're and looking then, for a water pump and you get a pop-up. Right. I click so you, on it and yeah. I, I, you have to sign in and do your thing or whatever. And I, so I did all that. Yep. And you're I like, see... I'm going to find me a water pump. I'm going to find... Yeah, I'm going to talk to these people. See if they... <laughs> Know anything about water pumps. It was yeah, it was so dumb. But anyway, so I get on there yep. and I see all these people talking. Yep. And I'm like, okay, so somebody's gotta be talking about a car. Nobody's talking about a car. So let me just tell then where I am. So I'm okay. in this chat room. 
because I had got back from a missions trip from London, and back then we didn't really have cell phones where we could just call another country without paying tons of money. So instead of calling, I am in this chat room because the missionaries say, instead of going and going back and forth with emails on planning our next trip, we can actually go into a chat site and we can talk like live time to one another right. from the United States to London. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is amazing and genius. Now, I also was old enough to have watched a little bit of Dateline and the news. Yeah. <laughs> and so I knew that in chat sites, usually like creepers. Yeah. I'm, a, that's, I'm saying that politely. I could fill it in with other words, but there, are a, there is a whole demographic of people that go to chat sites, right? And I knew that. So to be <clears throat> inconspicuous, I go in there and I register my username under my maiden name, which is Erickson, right? Yeah. Because I think that that's neutral. You're not a boy. You're not a girl. You're not going to get like whatever. You're neutral. Obviously, I joke. Should we even say what, what, what our joke is? What... <laughs> Probably, probably not. <laughs> so I went under the I went under the username of Erickson to not yep. draw attention to me because I knew that if I typed in my username as something like Sugar Boobs nineteen eighty three, which there were a few of those on there, and I I avoided because honestly I was I was completely oblivious to the world of. You know, See, and sugar, sugar boobs. Sugar boobs. <laughs> sugar boobs would have attacked. Would have attracted, like, dare I say, the killers. Yeah, I mean, and it, I wasn't about to get killed that day. Or I somebody was that wasn't to to looking control. for a water pump. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm in there as Erickson. You're looking for a water pump, and yeah. all of a sudden, ding! This little pop up comes up, and someone is trying to talk to moi. Yeah. Erickson. Well, she. Yeah. So she was. <laughs> I, at this point, I didn't even know if it was male, female. I didn't care. Someone said something about a car. I clicked on Ericsson mm -hmm. to, what did they call it back then, to P2P? Was it person to person? Something like that. Like instant so I could message. Just, yeah, like instant message. message. Yeah, yep, direct yep. message. So I said, hey, looking for some car parts. Not sure what to do. And she's like, I ignored you. She, well, she ignored me at first. I ignored the first time. And I thought that was rude, so I just kept. So I think then you asked again. Yeah. I want to say you asked two or three times. Something about, yeah. this is my kind of car. Yeah. <laughs> this is the make and model. <laughs> and then it was a water pump, and it kept like ding, ding, ding. Yep. And so finally, I typed back. Yeah, she said, dude, I am not a dude. Mm -mm. Leave me alone. Right? I'm like, okay, that's rude. I'm not sugar boobs looking to be killed. <laughs> I'm Erickson, loving Jesus. I don't want to talk to you. Dude, I'm not a dude. Right. And obviously, dare I say it was my wit and sassy <clears throat> charm. Well, I'm sat back like, uh-uh, <laughs> you're not going to sass me. <laughs> so I kept talking. So to long her. story short, yeah. So you kept mm -hmm. talking. So then I actually did talk to you. I was polite and said a couple things. Well, we exchanged some just some banter back and forth yep. that ended up being kind of playful. And I, to me, I thought, well, that was kind of fun. Got off there. Yep. And then two weeks later, couple, yeah, it was a couple weeks later. I got back on there and I'm like, I'm going to get back on here and, you know, have some banter with some people. And she was there again. So I clicked on her again and we started talking. Yep. And unbeknownst <clears throat> to our parents yep. at 19 and 21 years old, we yep. exchanged telephone numbers. We did. Right. Which was crazy. At the yeah. time, my mother would have killed me. And yeah. Jesus probably was thinking, okay, I'm setting this up. But still, girl, questionable judgment. Nonetheless, <laughs> we exchanged phone numbers. And for a year, yeah. we talked back and forth on the phone. Yep. We didn't see each other. Never saw each, each other, other. Talked almost every yep. night for an entire year. Yep, yep, yep. And what I feel is in that time, in that moment, that really sealed the foundation Yep. of what I think has made such a great relationship today mm -hmm. is that we were friends first before anything or anyone or any drama or anything was able to get in and come. Well, yeah, it was our... kind of the lives that we had there. Mm -hmm. We were actually able to call someone who had no ties to anybody we knew and talk yep. to them about all of our stuff. Right. And so we really connected that way. We were like way. virtual yep. pen pals. Right. Yeah. It's, well, yeah, telephone. Telephone yeah. pals. And then we decided that it was time that we should maybe exchange photographs because we had talked for so long 
Yep. So we, in an envelope, mailed a picture of each other because you can like email. Yeah, like snail that. mail. This, yep. sounds, this makes us seem so old. <laughs> we are, are we that old? My gosh, we're getting old. Wow. So then we mailed each other a picture of ourselves and your sister's best friend was getting married and you needed a date to that wedding. And you on the phone that night, I remember you said, yeah. I could use a date. What do you think about coming down? Yep. The pictures were in color. <laughs> great, they were, they great were question. in color, yeah. They were in color, yes. Um, and so, yeah, so we decided that we would meet yep. in person. And I told my parents, who were very much against this, I said, it's like I'm going to meet a friend that I've known for a long time. I've just never met them in person. But I promise right. you, my gut and my judgment says that we're totally fine. So we decided that I would drive down, and we met in person. Yep. Long story short, wrapping it up, we went back and forth for another <clears throat> year but mm -hmm. this time not over the phone, we went back and forth driving state to state. I'd right. go to Missouri, you'd come to Minnesota. And after an entire year of driving, now <clears throat> two years into our friendship slash relationship, we decided that we were getting too invested and too head over, head, I'll well, say, head over heels for each other. Right. The, con the conversation was... Here it goes. I had just gotten off work and she called me. And at that, I mean, at that point, we were actually dating. So... Yep, yep. She said, you know, if we're going to make this work, she goes, somebody's going to have to move. And she says, and it ain't going to be me. <laughs> and I said, well, okay, then. well, that's it. I guess I'm moving to Minnesota. That's it. And yep. three weeks later, I showed up in Butler, Missouri with my car, and yep. Lauren packed everything he had ever owned in my car and moved to Minnesota. Right. Did I drive the Galaxy here? No, I did not. Bummer. Found the water pump, and I sold it. Ah! Yeah, right. I did. I found one. He yep. did. He finally got one, and it wasn't yep. me that directed him there. And so yep. there you have it. In 2004, Lauren became an <clears throat> official Minnesotan. Hasn't looked back mm -hmm. since. We got married in 2006, and we have three and a half kiddos. Yep. And two. And her. Weenie dogs. Yep. And her mom and dad, God bless them, they built me a makeshift bedroom in the basement. Mm -hmm. When you moved up I, here. And I stayed there. Yep. And then. Married, got an apartment, and then the rest is history. Here we, Here we are. Here we are crafting in this. Owning our own business, amazing, right? So the Lord yeah. definitely had it in the plans for us to meet. Yeah. With a story like that, how can you say that we weren't supposed to meet, right? Yeah, it was pretty weird. I mean, too, too coincidental, right? I believe. I believe. Yeah. All right, ladies, so to bring us back to crafting, what you're seeing me doing is you're seeing Lauren and I are doing a little bit of sanding. So I have just sanded all four of the edges of my board, and then I'm going to do a light sand over the entire surface. When I sand, I take my sandpaper, and instead of going right on the edge like most people think, I do actually tip my sandpaper at a 90-degree angle and kind of hit the surface edge of the board and just kind of go like this. A lot of people get really nervous to sand. Don't you feel like that when you do with events? Lots yeah. of people are very dainty and fragile and scared of sanding. And I always say more sanding is best. Go it for, is. And if you feel like you've done too much, you still have more paint. Exactly. Put a little bit more on there. Redo it. Exactly. Keep going. See it? Yep. Yeah. My assistant, Martha, used to not sand much. And now sanding is important. I like it. Plus, I feel like it also gives it a little more of a lived-in look. Now you're seeing me sand a little over the surface of the paint. Let's talk about this quickly for a second. Now when I painted this board white, as you saw, I tried my best to do a thin coat of white because like we say in the painting world here at Appleberry's Attic, a thin coat dries the quickest. Yep. So you saw me kind of fanning it to dry it for TV purposes, but a thin coat dries nice and quick. And then with white, if it does tend to get too thick and the board feels kind of cool or damp, yep. you'll see me go over the surface to just, I say cut down that excess paint because the stencil, which is like a sticker, doesn't really stick very well to a board that is too heavy on the paint. Right. Right? And so we know that if we cut down on that paint, it's going to give a better stick on that stencil. And would you not agree that that is the one time or the one part of a sign that can quickly turn the project south? Oh, is yeah. when your stencil your, doesn't want to stick. Yep, yeah, if your stencil messes up, it's your whole world's going to fall apart. Yep. So I'm just going to go it's ahead. Gonna feel that way. Yep. I'm going to dust off all of that extra sand from me and the board, and you're just continuing to sand. You're showing the girls that you're sanding the edge of the frame. Yeah. 
on the surface, and you're just kind of giving it a little bit more of a lived in look. Right. So let's show an example here. So we've got our sanded board, and then here is our frame piece, edges sanded, surface, edges, giving it again a little right. bit more of that lived in look so that it's going to pair really nicely with that frame, with that sign. Perfect. Okay, so now that we've got our board dry, once we're confident that it is in fact dry, the test that I always say is does it feel cool, does it feel cold, does it feel damp to the touch? If it's none of those things, then it's dry and it's ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and move on to dropping the stencil. Okay. okay? Yep. So I'll go. show the girls this and then once we get this going, we're going to hear a little bit more about you and about, <laughs> <laughs> I bet you love that, right? Oh yeah, I love talking about me, sure. Yeah. <laughs> You are the guest crafter, so it kind of just comes yeah, with the, I, I with gotta, the job, gotta right? Do it, yeah. All right, so clean off your workspace and let's get ready to drop this stencil, okay? Now, when it comes to dropping a stencil, this is what we get asked about the most. Would you not agree with that, Martha? This is the thing that people are always having a little bit of trouble with. So, we want to be able to show you girls and guys today how to drop a stencil. Now, these stencils that we work with are a three part stencil, meaning that you've got the front of the stencil, that's this heathered looking tape that you can kind of sort of see through. You've got the vinyl itself, which today it's red. That's the second part. And the third part is the backing. The backing is like the graph paper. Now to get a sticker or stencil to stick, you know that you need to take the back off of the sticker. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the back off of the sticker by creasing the backing and pulling it low and slow. That's really the only way I know how to say it best, but I'm creasing this to keep it low and slow so that I can rock and kind of wiggle this back and forth to release all of the letters. Now, if at any point, any middles of the letters, like the A, the O, the E, if that sticker starts to come up with the vinyl or with the backing, put the backing down, smooth it out, give it a little zhuzh, and then continue and keep moving. At no point in the day should this piece come up with the backing, it needs to stay down. Yep, just pay close attention when you're peeling that off. Yep, that's why we say go low and slow. Low and slow. Because if you go too fast, you'll rip that vinyl. Yep. All right, babe, Perfect. I'm going to keep that for my placemat. Yep. Now, normally with a guest crafter, we would have them doing their own project and me doing mine, mm -hmm. which is what we did on season one. But I figure with season two working together seemed more fun, right? Plus, well, yeah, because we have two of these in our house. Instead we of, live yeah. at the same place. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I did is I just turned my stencil over, and I'm just going to lay it down on the board. Now, our stencils are cut within about, oh, I would say an eighth to a fourth of an inch. So as long as you line the shape of the stencil with the shape of the board, you're pretty right. well getting it centered, right? I mean, you don't want to put it like kitty wampus or slide it off of here, but overall, you In get In Missouri, the we say catty wampus. Oh, I don't sorry. know if you guys knew that. Y'all say we weird do. words. We say there. catty wampus, catty corner. Catty, catty mm -hmm. corner. And Pretty sure most of the country says that, too. Isn't there another word that you say that's different? Oh, tons. There's tons. I mean. We won't get into the duck, duck, gray duck thing, because yeah. that's just foolishness. That's, yeah. Yep. I, and um, what was another one? Hammock versus hammock. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's all sorts of words. Well, the first time she said the word hammock, she mm -hmm. said it like hammock, which I know a lot of Minnesotans, a lot of don't Minnesotans say, say it that way, yep. but they do. Yep, a hammock. And my dad said, isn't that what you put in beans? He thought <laughs> okay. she said hammock. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, also, when he's talking about someone being spoiled, he makes this <clears throat> noise, and it goes like this. Every Missourian knows exactly what I'm saying. That boy is runt. He's runt. Runt. What are you saying? I'm sorry. Is that a word or runt. a noise? Yeah. It's a word. <laughs> it's R runt. runt. So now that I'm up here with I can't get it. Now that I'm up here with people that think they know how to talk, <laughs> I've learned that runt means ruined oh. or ruined. How a lot of Minnesotans say. <laughs> ruined. <laughs> ruined. Okay, but you're yeah. say, you're saying ruined. Yeah. But you're saying ruined. Yep. Okay, got if it. If you see it like a little kid that's crying in the store, you say that boy's ruined. He, okay. needs, he needs whooping. There you have it. Yeah, there you have it. Does make sense? <laughs> runt. Yeah, runt. I don't right? Know. I, don't know, I don't know how to spell it. There's a lot of words. Like I don't. I wouldn't know how to spell. Like my grandma used to say, if you're gonna grab something off the shelf in the middle of something, she said, yeah. "Grab me that jar in twinks them too." 
In Twinkst. In Twinkst. Like twinks, in between? Yeah. In Twinkst, yeah. Oh in my. Between. Okay, twinks so people from Missouri say some slightly different things. I mean, to be fair, it's <laughs> the Ozarks part there of Missouri. There we go. So, yeah. All right, so I've got my stencil. I've got it down on the board, and I'm just smoothing it out to make sure that it stays stuck to the board. Now what we're going to do is we're going to peel off the top layer, which is that tape that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. Same concept. If any part of that sticker comes off with the tape, put it back down. Low and slow. Low and slow, and tell it to stay down. Ooh. Now, what you may experience, you can take, you can do it with your hands, you can do it with this vinyl tool, credit card, whatever you got. If you experience that the vinyl wants to come up a little bit, again, just keep holding it down and making sure those pieces stay down and peel this up. Okay, now if you're at home and you are not essentially taping a TV show, you've got plenty of time to go take a blow dryer and hit that board with a blow dryer, making sure that it's nice and dry, room temp, before you go stick that stencil down, right? Did you but, say taping a TV show? <laughs> taping, doing, what would we call this? Do we call this a TV show? Should we call this a, I don't know, what do you like calling it? I don't know. Uh... I always said that I feel like I have a face for radio, yet. Somehow oh, I keep finding a screen. That's me. <laughs> <clears throat> You're too cute. Kids nowadays call it live streaming. I don't oh, know what you call it. I think that does sound right, Lauren. Yep. See, look at us. Lauren, Britt understands that there's two different people. Hey. Oh. I need to give a shout out. Yeah. To Kentucky. Britt? I love Kentucky. Hey, I've got, I have a lot of uh, extended relatives that live in Kentucky, distant relatives. Yes. In the comments, y'all can tell us if you are from somewhere other than Minnesota. We love, we love our out-of-state guests, right? That's what you're here representing. Yeah, definitely. Represent. If you're from the South, we love you even more. That's no, right. I'm, I'm just kidding. We don't. Born Dale. <laughs> okay. So but now I I've got my stencil laid down on mm -hmm. the board. I'm just going through, making sure that I've got all those pieces. Yes. I'm making sure I got all the pieces stuck on there, going around the perimeter, making sure it's sealed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show the example, but then I'm gonna pass it off to you because I want you to be able to fill this in, right? Yeah, so, no problem. So, <coughs> looking at the example board, which is past the camera, right? Um, do yep. you like the idea of the mixtape being pink for Valentine's Day? <coughs> or do you like something different? Because I thought we would use so I've got a cameo pink. So for anyone okay. who loves um, the pink shown in the example, we've got cameo pink. I saw a really cute one done from one of the girls, Jamie, in our craft community. Shout out to Jamie. She did the bottom part of her cassette tape in a different color. So I was thinking we could do pink, darker pink, and then do the words in black. Do you love that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Are you sure? Pink cassette tape. I'm not sure if I've ever seen one. And I've seen right? a lot of cassette tapes. But Once again, I'm we're myself doing look really a old. nice Valentine's Day feel. Now, okay. going back to this box, we said that this was like a nod to nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And so we loved the idea of having a mixtape on the sign. We also, in this January box, did <clears> a beginner cross stitch. And we also did a handwritten, handmade card. We thought that right. that was fun, yeah. right? Because no one ever writes anything anymore. I Everything know. is all text. Okay, so here's my example. I'm going to show you how to do this, and then I'm going to pass it off and ask you a couple more questions. Okay. Do you like that? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I do or not. <laughs> but yeah. So you know the drill. We're going to take our sponge, hold the biggest part in our hand. We're going to dunk, dab off the excess, and then once you've dabbed off the excess, you want very minimal paint. So the least amount of paint right. is the best way to do this. And then what you're going to do is looking at that example picture, mm -hmm. you're going to fill in the perimeter here. So it's dunk, dab off the excess, and then start to fill in your space. Now, in this case, we're going to do this section a different color. So leave this. Okay. But you're going to come through and you're going to dunk, dab, 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 and then fill it in. When you're doing this, guys, you do not want to do um, like a brush stroke motion because you don't want to like push and squeeze any of the paint under the sticker and you also don't want to sit and squish and saturate it in there so it's dunk dab 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 and then come in here and do this bouncing technique to fill it in and get in and out of there quickly okay gotcha. so you're going to do all of the perimeter and then all of the middle part here the lines all of that jazz okay 
Right, so the, the words and this part is going to be different. Correct. That's the words doing. and the bottom are going to be different. Gotcha. So I'm going to pass that over to you while you get to do that. Okay. So we have been married. Speaking about love and Valentine's Day, we have been married for how long? Do you even remember? Because I think I know the number. You sure? I think. Well, you, okay. Most girls are really good at that stuff and boys are not. That's yeah. kind of like the, the general assumption. But I will tell you that numbers and words are hard for me. <laughs> yeah. I oftentimes will look at something and my brain cannot connect with what the word is I'm trying to say. Same thing with numbers. I think that we have been married for 14 years. Four, this will be our 15th? 14 years, yeah. Okay, okay. You got it right. Look at that. See? You're not in trouble. <laughs> Isn't it funny how we have the reverse? Yeah. So we've been married for 14 years. Some good years, some <laughs> challenging years. Not so good? What? No, I, was, I didn't say that. Challenging. I felt challenging was good. Yep, challenging is good. Yes, for yes. For sure. So would you say that marriage has been hard? Has it been easy? Since you we're know, talking about love, <laughs> let's get in. Let's dive into it. I would say er yeah, right. In my truck. It's a trap. Uh, honestly, I marriage, it was difficult in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, because usually when you first get married, you have no money. Mm, yep. You are two completely different people, so you literally think that everything that each other does is completely wrong and right. not the way to do things. Yeah, you so 100% do everything yeah. different than how I would. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. If there's anybody, you know, watching that is yeah. freshly married, yeah. you probably know exactly what we're yeah. talking about. You know what I say? Lauren and I are exact opposites, like for real. Cold, hot, black, white, yep. uh, sun, snow. We're completely different in everything. We really are. I yeah. think that, so here's what I think about opposites. Maybe this, maybe this will hit home with someone else. I think that opposites attract, but I also think that if you're not careful with your tongue and with your heart, opposites can attack. Yeah, Would they, you not say that there were some years when we were learning how to live together? What's, that the, opposite, what's the opposite of attract? Repel? Is that the opposite of? Could be. You could we repel, repel each other. Yeah. I think. I think yes. There was. There was a little bit of that. Yeah. But I would say that we kind of learned to figure that out. We did. Yeah. I yeah. Learned. And so my question to you, my next question on my list of things to ask you is, what would you say is the secret to a good marriage? Oh boy. <laughs> um, would you say that we have a good marriage? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So what's the secret? Tell them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can only speak to my end of it, there. honestly. Okay, I'll and speak I, to mine. I mean, I I'm suppose I could have an opinion on your what you should sure, be doing, too. Sure, but. Well, I'm the interviewer, you're okay. the interviewee, but I will, since we're together, and this is, yes, I'll, I'll chime in. You go for you, you, for you. Honestly, I think the secret to a good marriage is selflessness. Yeah, um, amen. We decided a long time ago that if I am meeting all of your needs, mm -hmm then mine will just automatically be met by you. Exactly. Yep. Hopefully, you know, you would be in a relationship that would, you know, do the same. I think that's what we've always said is May that I <clears throat> always think about you first, right? right. So yep. before my wants, my needs, my desires, I always think about you and I'm making sure that you're happy, you're healthy, you're right. taking care of, you're feeling loved, you're feeling appreciated and heard. Yep. And I know that if I do that for you first, and you're doing that for me first, well right. then see how we're actually being very selfless, but it turns out to where our, our needs are still getting met, yeah. just not by ourselves. Right, because everybody's other. needs need to be met. We're, we're people, so. Right, you... and it's okay to be selfish sometimes. Sure. But I think taking care of each other is what produces happy, it longevity, is. Yep. and marriages. And that may sound cliche or corny, but it's actually the truth. If 100%. you, if you are, taking care of your wife or your husband and mm -hmm. they're happy with you, you know, mm -hmm. you're, and, you know, meeting their needs, then they're going to want to do that for you too. It's right? just human nature, right? It all works out. I think another good thing too is that in the beginning, okay, are you done with all your pink? Yeah, I think we're Why done. Why don't you get that spot right up there, babe? I kind of like that spot, but okay. Oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. 
I thought maybe you intentionally missed that little spot there. You know, I like things Character. to look weathered. There we go. Okay, I think you've got all of your spots. That yeah, looks good to me. I think that's think? fantastic. Okay, perfect. What, what do you guys say? This is what it's going to look like when you are here. Love, loving that. Yep. Yep, so he's got it all filled in. Now we're going to move on to filling in the bottom part of the cassette and we're gonna fill in the letters. Now we want to go ahead and do different colors. So you're gonna to switch to a new sponge, or if you don't have enough excess sponges, you can use, instead of this part of the sponge, you can trade off and do a new color on the bottom of the sponge, okay? okay. So you go ahead and you're gonna move on and we're gonna do the bottom part of the cassette in the darker pink. Gotcha. So dunk, dab, dab, dab. Great question, thank you, Martha. Um, so the outside of the cassette tape, was Apple Barrel Cameo Pink. The darker pink that we're using is from Hobby Lobby, which is my all-time favorite store. And this is the Anita's Acrylic in color Fuchsia. I really just love Fuchsia. this. Fuchsia. Right? It's a good word. This, you know, yeah, this is Fuchsia, right? It's a good pink, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a bright pink, but it's a little bit more muted, not so, well, magenta, right? Magenta would be a brighter pink. I can honestly mm -hmm. tell you, I don't know the difference between magenta and fuchsia. Really? Yeah. Okay. How I about know. like blush and mauve? Do you know the difference of those? Uh, no. Teal and turquoise. Yeah, I do know the difference in that. Mm, okay. Blush and mauve isn't mauve more of a peachy pink? Mauve is a little bit more gray and kind of dusty rose. Really? Yep. Okay, and blush yeah, is a little blush is a little more leans towards corals, orangey, peachy. Okay. Wow. Love it. Learn something new every day. Look at that. So speaking about learning something new, early on in our marriage, we did marriage counseling um, through the church and the pastor that we got married through. Yep. And one of the things that we had to learn, which I think was super beneficial, is we needed to learn about each other's love languages. So we took a love language yep. test and we got to find out our scores in a love language. Anybody out there, anyone watching this video, have you taken the love language test? I find it super intriguing. If you have, let us know or give us a heart or a thumbs up because I think the love language was super informative to us in our marriage. Oh, yes? definitely. Because if you want to meet your spouse's needs, mm -hmm. then you need to know their love language. So, I think it's completely true. So accurate. the synopsis of a love language is, is that everyone <clears throat> gives love in one way and everyone also receives love in another way. Yep. And so the different types of love languages are like acts of service, words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, and physical touch. Right. So then you go through and you take that profile test and you figure out which way do you perceive love the most, right? Yep. And so if you're constantly giving me gifts after gifts after gifts, that's amazing and I love that, but my love language might actually be quality time. And so if you're just giving me gifts and buying my love but not spending time with me, right. Then it's not. Then I'm not feeling that, right? right. Not filling your tank, essentially. There you yep. go, right? right? And so I think love languages is a big thing. Learning that mm -hmm. and then trying to meet each other's needs through that as well. <clears throat> right. All good secrets, right? That is. Being selfless, knowing each other's love language. Yep. Do we have any other great tips? I wouldn't say we're pros by any means, but no. 14 years is is something, no? <clears throat> yeah. Well, it is. It's it's a big deal. Small spot right there. I think I, it wouldn't take. Just a little no. bit more. Dunk. Dab. 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 There you go. <laughs> you would you think are doing you would, so great, Lauren. You would think I've never done this before. Rah, rah. You're doing great. You're yeah. doing good. You just got to get these perimeters a little bit more just so that the lines are defined. Ooh, questionable choice because it's such a, right? Yeah, I got it. Okay, that's okay. You do you, and then Mama's got a brush. I'll come in and fill if I yeah. need to. Do I have any more secrets to a good marriage? Do you think that's about it? Honestly, just... Don't be a jerk. <laughs> I mean, I love if, that. If you That's if you are always just crabby, then everybody in your house is going to be crabby. Honestly, especially if you're if you're the dad. If you're the dad, moms can do it too, but dads seem to have a knack for just bringing the whole house down. Mm -hmm. If they are angry, crabby, irritable, and short, yeah. If yeah. you are goofy, fun loving, and just good to your wife, your kids see that too, mm -hmm. you know, and I just think that, um, you know, I'm not always that way. I'm crabby sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, but it's just be nice. I mean, it's common sense. Love language is common sense. If you know your mm -hmm. wife likes gifts, 
bring her home some flowers once in a while. Mm -hmm. If you know your wife is, um, what, she loves acts of service, do the dishes without her asking. Right. Take out the garbage and don't forget. Like, that's, I, I always forget to pull the <laughs> garbage and she gets irritated with me. And I realize it's because she feels like no, it's something I dropped else. the ball. And no, she, it's something else I got to do. Something else she's got to do. Or if she has to tell me, it's something else that she has to do. Because telling me is an inconvenience too. So. Right. You know. Grab a sponge for me, a new sponge, and I'm going to show you how to do these letters. I do appreciate that. I think, yes, not being a jerk, that's a great way to just simply, <laughs> simply put it. And yeah. I would say that part of just having a happy heart and not being a jerk is just in our house, we find church and a relationship with the Lord to be part of that story. Would you not agree? Oh, it's the biggest part of the story. I think that helps with a happy heart. Yeah. And not uh, being a jerk. Well, honestly, that to me, that's what has helped me the most through, well, just learning and um, being good to her is having God close to my heart. Mm -hmm. That has been the biggest thing. Probably what I should have mentioned first. To be honest with you, because if without that, I don't know if I would be the guy I am right now. So Warren grew up a little bit of a different cat. Yeah. Um, to anyone who knows or does not know the old Lauren, I call it. The old Lauren was a little different. Uh, the yeah. old oops, I got a little mess there. The old Lauren enjoyed a few different habits. Yep. And um, once those habits were gone, I think the real full potential of you came into play. Old old Lauren was wild, very wild. Right. So yeah, that's uh, once I got rid of that, got my mind clear, mm -hmm. found Jesus, mm -hmm. then I became who she needed me to be. Right, and all things started to come into yeah. play. And honestly, I would say you are probably my favorite person in the whole entire world. For oh, well, me, well, for our kids, you. for all of that. That is I just, think... that is precious, thank you. <laughs> You're precious. Speaking of precious, check out this amazing sign, you guys. We are just about finished up with our stenciling. There was one little spot where it kind of bled over into the other, which you'll see me fix up here in a second. But now once you've got all of this area filled in with your paint, you're going to find a corner and you're going to peel off the sticker. Great question. Yes, Martha. What I did is since I thought that the pink and the pink down here was um, a little bit more muted. Instead of doing straight solid black, I added a little dot of gray to my black to make it more of a charcoal. Do you awesome. want to, I don't have an X-Acto knife, but I need to pick this girl out of here. So all these leftover stickers, Thank this you. is the part of the stencil that did its job, okay? So this is okay that all of these pieces stayed back Tighten because up. what happened is, is they kept the board underneath the area that it needed to be white. And so now we're gonna come through and just go ahead and quickly pick these out. Once we've got these picked out, there are, besides the frame, there are just a few little steps that we'll be finishing up on the surface of this. And we'll do those as soon as we get these out. The two steps that you're gonna see us do on the surface, you can grab those and get those ready out of your box, is we will be putting on the heart stickers we thought that it would be a lot easier to just add that really nice dimension and texture by adding the heart stickers to the side here. And so <clears> we'll put those on and then we're also going to do a little bit of freehand painting. Now, let me just tell you that if this is not your strong suit, oops, you do not have to do the freehanded painting. We just did it because we thought that it looked really nice to have that black cassette tape. Do you know what a cassette tape? What is that stuff called in the middle? Tape. Is it the, the tape? The yeah, that's, that's the tape. This is just the case. I get it. Okay, that's yeah. the tape. So we're going to paint that in because, again, on this multi-dimensional stencil, you can't quite get all of those different areas in there. And so I hand-painted that in, which was actually very, very simple. So I'm just going to finish this up, and then I'm going to get my brush, and we'll fix out those pieces. These are very small pieces. So I'm doing this with an X-Acto knife, but ladies, you can use a pin, you can use a toothpick, you can use anything sharp that'll kind of just get in under that sticker and lift it out. Now, in the couple of cases where there is a little bit of bleeding over onto the extra area, I'm going to dip it in my paint, 
and I'm just going to go ahead and with a slight steady hand, just fill it in like so, okay? And then I'm going to go up here, and I got this pink, and we're going to fix this line. And then do you want to go ahead, Lauren, and get these hearts? Take the back off of these stickers, and then we're going to go ahead and put them on quick. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. Do any of you guys, are you guys old enough to remember decorating your mixtapes that you made? A lot of you are not old enough to even make a mixtape. I know a lot of you didn't do that, but. Oh, speaking of nostalgia yeah. with this box, I making a mixtape, you had to listen to the radio all day long. Oh, yeah. Have the tape in there and be ready for your favorite song to start. And yep. Run over and hit record, but you really always miss the first few seconds. Right, which wasn't a big deal, but you would run over and hit record, and then there's a microphone on your radio, your boom box, as we call them, and then you'd hit record, and then the it, the microphone would just record what was coming out of the speaker, so you had to like shut your bedroom door to keep background noise out of it. Right, with yeah. your mom yelling at you. Oh man, we were, we were so cool. Yeah, I remember I, doing that. I remember decorating our tapes. I remember decorating notebooks and like writing back and forth to your friends. That probably wasn't a boy thing, though, but girls did that. No, no. No, <laughs> nope, didn't do that. I didn't decorate a notebook. That's fair. Actually, I, I actually did do a lot of that because I... I've, uh, you have always been really artsy. Yeah, right? I've always drawn pictures. Since I was little, I was drawing pictures, so I was decorating everything I could get my hands on. I so, used to get in a lot of trouble in school for drawing on everything. So, so it kind of made sense that your wife just started a craft studio because we're both very crafty. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not so much as crafty as I am just, uh, what do you call it? Not sketchy. <laughs> uh, art artistic. Artistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Ske I'm sketchy. You're really sketchy. sketchy. Yeah. Okay, so we've got all of the stencils picked out. We've got the little bits filled in. Now what you're going to see me do real quickly is you're going to see me the same color that I used for the Valentine mixed letters, which was kind of just a gray-black mixture. You're going to see me come in and fill in the tape part of the cassette, okay? I got to see this. I didn't watch it. So movie. here's the thing. If you wanted to leave it like this, because right now you're feeling overwhelmed by hand yeah. painting in anything, this is adorable. Would you not agree? Yeah. This is totally cute. You don't need anything done to this. But if you wanted to add in the actual tape part of the tape, what I did is I with a fine brush, dunked it into my paint, and then in this middle box here, where the tape reel normally lives, I just, keep that table nice and steady, I just did like a half little circle here, and then I just filled it in. Weird silence while I'm painting. <laughs> Sorry. Lauren, just, Lauren, do a little song or dance. Yeah, we're, oh, you don't want me to do that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I, I, I want to see if you actually do, because tapes, you know, they always had a lot more tape on one side. They have the more other. on one side Is and that, less. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I, she's been telling me to get my eyes checked, because I literally cannot see that from here. Yeah, we're going to. It's pretty bad. See? Yeah. You're like one of the kids. I got to call and make an appointment for you. Don't no, I? I'll do it. I get, I'll get it taken care of. <laughs> I just don't want to accept the fact that I need glasses. What? Yeah. Your wife's been rocking them for years, babe. Yeah, but, you know. You were the one who partly encouraged me. I've always worn contacts since I was actually quite little because I have terrible eyesight. But recently, as I've gotten older with astigmatism, <laughs> my eyes go kind of funky. Right. And glasses are <clears throat> way more comfortable. And you were the one who said, no, I like the glasses. Go for it. Well, you can do it. I really do like the glasses a lot um, on you. <coughs> and I love I love that for you. And honestly, you there would be nights where she would be I don't know if she would get like a one of our dog's hairs would get in her eye or what it was with the contacts, but she, her eyes would swell shut. Mm. And it would be a miserable night. And I'm like, you know what? You do look great in those glasses. You should just keep was, those glasses on. Were you coercing me into that? that well, yeah, because I wanted you to be very nice of you. Comfortable. Okay. And you do look good in glasses. Thank you. All right, so this is how we've got that cassette tape filled in, y'all. More on one side, less on the other. Yep, there you go. Perfect. 
Okay, so now we're going to stick those hearts on, teach y'all how to do a frame, and we are set to go. So why don't you take these, okay? And do you see the example? Well, actually, you just said that you don't. <laughs> oh, I, I see some things on it. Okay, so. So you got, a, you got a big one up here. These are the hearts that are in your box. They're a sticker, so we took the backing off of them. I will give you a disclaimer. If you do not like the color of hearts that came in your box, these are felt. So you can paint over them with any old color. You can take a paintbrush, dunk it into a different color pink or a different color red, white, purple, whatever color, and you can just fill over the heart in a different color if you'd like. It will take paint, it will look great, totally fine. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and add these. So I did the bigger heart up here, so if you want to, you can drop the bigger we're heart do there. That. Yep. Do you want it straight on or kind of angled? So do don't it? touch your finger to that cassette tape. Oh. Did you already do that? Nope, I'm nope good. you're good. Okay, so I would do it tipped a little bit at an angle. Like so? Let me see. So slide or on I, over I'm here. I'm too high there. Too high, yep. So we're going to pick this up. I'm thinking like, do you like right about there? Can we see that in the camera still, I think? Perfect. So, like so. And then if we did red up there, then I think we should do red down here. Yep. Okay. You know, so she's not pressing them down, right? Yep. In case you get them all on there, you don't like the arrangement, you can move them. Great. Right? Yeah, totally. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the other smaller one here, and then you think the pink one should go down there? Do you think the pink one should go down there? You obviously do. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, is this good? Nope. No, she's going to move it. I, do you like it there? Yes. Yeah, I love it there. Okay, then that's where we leave it. I just want you to like it. I love it. I'm sorry, I have to move it a little. Okay. <laughs> It's just touching the bottom. It's touching the bottom of the cassette. I will keep it right where you had it, <laughs> but I am going to I am, I am gonna move it up. Okay, done. Oh, that okay. looks so much better. You're right. You're a turd. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and smooth these stickers on so that they stick. And now we're going to go ahead and build a frame. This is where I think that you're really going to shine, Lauren, and I'm going to let you take over. Okay? All right. So let me quickly give this a dry so that you don't get your finger smudged in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this frame. So do you wanna tell the girls which sides are they starting with? The okay. smaller two pieces go where? The smaller two pieces mm -hmm. are gonna go on the sides. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously this is pretty self-explanatory. So do I need to stay right here? Do no, I need to scoot over? Good. Okay. Okay, so we got it there. So these are gonna go on the sides. Mm -hmm. Kind of see how that works. Perfect. If you got, if you got, if you look at these, you stand it up like this and you got a little bit, this is a little too long. Yep. Then you just, all you need to do is split just the difference. split the difference and center it a little better. Yep. Yep. Find the side that you like that you want to nail they on. They should be pretty darn close. You did cut close to thou a thousand yep. of these. There was a whole bunch. So, so we are giving him a little grace in that. But yes, if there's a little <clears throat> off, then you would cut the difference. Yeah. Now, what you want to make sure that you do is think about which piece is going out right. and then which piece is the front. So I think that this should go out on top mm -hmm. and then this or this should be the front. Okay. Is that what you think? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You always taught me to do a little bit of wood glue. I always do some wood glue because this stuff That's right here. For you. This stuff right, if you're only putting one nail in it, which let's face it, mm -hmm. one nail is all you need. If mm -hmm. you have this glue, it'll never come off. Okay, so I'm Unless getting the you're nails. Smacking it with a hammer or something all the time. Right? She probably won't be so you're going to do a thin little thing of glue so that it doesn't <coughs> smear out yep, the sides. Just like this. Can we still see this in the camera? Nope. Go that way a little bit. Yep. So just a thin little strip of glue. This is going to squish out of the sides a little bit, but. Do you want to take a little off then? Just do no. a little dabbing. Well, Sure, you can Just do that. so or that you... it doesn't squirt out the front okay. on your cute sign. Yep. Our cute. Sign. Our, yeah. <laughs> be claiming this sign. It's going to go on my side of the bed. Cute. All right. Okay, you go ahead and put that on. I'm going to enjoy a chocolate because I feel like I've earned it after all this talking and stenciling. Yeah, I've earned it. It's exhausting trying to teach me how to do something. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. You're doing great. Thanks. All right, so just how I do it, and you can do it any way you want, and you can go all the way to one side or the other, but I like mm -hmm. to center it. I feel mm -hmm. like that just kind of makes everything easy. Mm -hmm. So center it, okay. and then look at it this way. Making sure it's like centered. Like dead on, so you're not, you don't 
shoot the nail through one side or the other, you're going straight down. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and help hold it. Yep. And oh, you're gonna go ahead and put it in there. Oops, got, me off, got me off center there. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna hold my weight over here. So just center that, center that nail. Yep. And just give it. Now, if you've got a nail gun at home and you want to pop nail gun a is, yeah. couple nail guns, that would be the easiest and the best. Nail but, gun is the way to go for sure. But in your kit, you do have nails so that mm -hmm. if you don't have a nail gun, you can put it in. And I'm going to show right here on the camera, just like so. We've got the nail that <clears> went into the frame going down into the board. Yep. And like he's talking about, that is how we've centered it. Yeah. And I'm All sorry right. we didn't send you a hammer if you need to use your shoe. <laughs> I don't think a shoe would work, Lauren. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Mm -mm. A pot. There you go. You do, yeah, you have like an iron skillet. All right, Lauren, as we wrap things up, we are going to have you do the frame because this is your wheelhouse. Tag me in if you need me to hold it. Oh, no, I'm good. Got it? Through all of this banging and hammering, I'm sure you all can hear super well, but what we're gonna do as we wrap up this fun time of crafting together and kind of just interviewing and chit-chatting about love and Valentine's Day coming up. Oh, thank you for asking. All right, here, I'll let you pick what side. Mmm, that's a tough one. They're both very similar. I think I like, do you like this one? I love that side, that's my favorite. Can you hand me the glue? No, I like that side. Oh yeah, me too. I was I'm, just kidding about the other one. I'm super indecisive. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're so sweet. Okay, Lauren, let's ask you some rapid fire questions. Oh boy. Okay? While I'm using the hammer? <laughs> Do you like that? I think it's fun. It's going to be great. Okay, it'll be fun. Rapid fire means I don't want you to take a super long time to think about your answer. Gotcha. Just give me your answer. Oh boy. Ready? <laughs> sure you want to do this? Well. Okay. Lord knows what I'm going to say. You just remember. Family friendly. Family friendly. Oh, yeah. We're, we're PG. Mm -hmm. Or G. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Rapid fire. Lauren, what is your favorite food? Oh, nachos. Obviously. What is your... <laughs> what? <laughs> Clearly, your favorite food is nachos. <laughs> I meant... Not at first glance, but I'm looking at you, Nachos, as your wife, obviously. It's oh, a yeah, question no. that I would even ask you because I know that Lauren loves nachos. Yeah. Okay. Favorite food, nachos. Favorite color? Chrome. Chrome. <laughs> Good. That's not really a color, but. We'll let you go with chrome. I love chrome. Chrome. Like old cars. Yep. And I'm a big fan of red, too. Mm, red. I like okay. red things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's see, date night in or date night out? Ooh, I'm kind of a, I've turned into kind of a homebody. Date night in? Yeah, I think date night in would be my thing. Do you think your wife is crazy? Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> in a good way. What is a good way? <clears throat> crazy enough to start this business that I never thought would be amazing. And now I like completely bought into the crazy because it's awesome. That's right. Lauren used to think so, that Appleberry's Attic was a really cool hobby of mine. Yeah. And you have always been really good at encouraging me and cheering me on. But yep. I think even you would agree. I don't think you knew that we would be this big. Or I don't even think. I don't think no. I thought we'd be this big. I always imagined it and um, dreamed of how amazing it could be. But I always thought that that was a dream and not a reality. Right. Do we have time for a very short story here in this rapid fire thing? We do because you still have a bottom piece and I still have three more rapid fires. So go for it. Okay. So to explain why I think she's kind of crazy, back in the day when In a good she, way. In a Please good, put that. Crazy back, in a good way. Back then, it, <laughs> I would never say this out loud, but I did not think it was in a good way. I oh. thought it was a <laughs> in the butt. Anyway, she, when she started this business... She said, I'm going to have some girls come over and we're going to do some crafting. I'm like, yeah, well, whatever, whatever you need to do. She goes, I need you to leave the house with the kids for like hours. Mm -hmm. My kids were little. Mm -hmm. I mean little, babies. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I said, are you serious? Like, I need to I leave the house. And she says, oh, yeah, before you do that, hi, kids. I love you guys. I loved hanging out at Burger King for four hours with you. <laughs> When mom and her friends were crafting. Hey, G. Hey, T. Hey, C. We love you. 
love you. <laughs> yes. Um, but anyway, she said, oh, yeah, before you leave, you have to get all the furniture out of the house. Mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. to take couches, mm -hmm. tables, end tables, everything had to go out into our three-season porch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, this, this has got to be a phase. Like, this is not going to happen all the time. Because Appleberry's Attic started In our, by yeah. me just having a girls' night. You had just went hunting. The two bigs were at home with hand, foot, and mouth disease. And I was yeah. super pregnant with your third kiddo. Right. And you're like, peace out. I'm going hunting for three or four days. Ooh. I was See, like. That's not, not me thinking of, like, meeting her needs. I was like, rude. See, I don't do it all the time. I was like, rude. But I get it. You need to go do your thing. So you did. But when you came back in what I would say is your always nice, loving way, you were like, you need a break. You look like you could use some time to yourself. And I'm like, yeah, you think? <laughs> and I don't know if it's because I was super pregnant or super pissed at you, but I remember you saying that and I started crying. Yeah. And I remember thinking, what should I do with a day to myself? Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Should I get caught up on laundry and wash some underpants? Should I make a freezer lasagna for, you know, a night when we don't have dinner. And I ended up getting my girlfriends to come yes, over. That's what you should do. <laughs> no, Got my girlfriends over and we essentially started a craft night and it yes. started happening every other month. It took <clears> off and it did, yes, become so big right. that we had to move all the furniture out of our house every other month yep. just to accommodate my growing hobby. Right. So for about every other month for about, I don't know, what would you say, 18 months or so, mm -hmm, she's mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. need to move all the furniture out of the house. I'm thinking, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. I, yeah, br I had really. broken our couch already because you just don't move couches all the time like that. So, but anyway, that was kind of the story of how things got started. That's why I thought she was crazy because, yeah. I mean, face it, that is kind of crazy. But then I didn't know she had this all in mind, which maybe she didn't. But it, I mean, I think it was there. Once I, again, divine intervention. Yeah, I, I think the uh, pipe, the pipe dream of something that would never actually be real but could happen. Right. Happened, and here we are, living proof that take a dream, yeah. work hard, run with it. Right. right. So, guys, if your wife seems like she's nuts, <laughs> just hear her out, listen to her, just and. Run with it. First of all, you'll make her feel really, really good if you do that. Thank you. That could benefit you. <laughs> and, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and um, you'll make her feel validated. Yes. And she'll feel like I can like conquer you, the world. Well, yeah. And she'll I've feel like said. you care. Like you care. Yeah. You're my she, biggest cheerleader, yeah. and I so appreciate that. Right. And if it is crazy, it's great. I mean, you'll know eventually that it was just nuts. Right? Crazy in a good but way. But sometimes, sometimes crazy actually is good. It's good. It I was agree. good. I agree. A yep. passionate, chaotic, focused crazy. That's what I like to call myself. Yeah. Yep. Passionate. Okay, last rapid fire questions before we wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in Valentine's Day? I didn't. I used to think it was crazy. Okay. But. Rapid fire. Okay. Yes. That, that's, a, that's a tough question. I believe in Valentine's Day because I think that you should celebrate love. Love's a good thing. If you're in love, it's you should celebrate it because it's an amazing thing. Amen. What's your dream job? If you could choose. Don't think about logistics. Don't think about what would need to... What's your dream job? Everybody's going to think I'm catering to you. It used to be I wanted to rebuild hot rods. That was what I always wanted to do. But Water now... Pumps. Water pumps. Yeah, as I've gotten older, I've realized that I just want to work for myself mm -hmm. with her because this business and you know getting to hang out and getting to work together in this business has been amazing so so your dream job is working with me yeah you are scoring like, so many brownie points lauren dale no they're all, gonna, honey. they're all gonna think i'm full of it I don't <laughs> know, but it's true what is your favorite thing to do in your downtime you have an hour or two to yourself what do you want to do um oh boy um rapid fire rapid fire I like to build things. Yep. I actually, I, this is going to sound weird, like I'm a monkey or something, but I really like to, I really like to make things shiny, <laughs> like buff a car, or yep. paint, like I painted that tractor hood. It was like the best time of my life. When it I was. Yep. Moving forward into 2021, 
would you say, I'll take that and I'll put it over here. Oh, sorry, I keep that. What would you, that's all right, totally fine. Um, 2021, what would you say moving forward is your goal or your word or thought for the year of 2021? New year, old is gone, business is back reopened. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, we're in like a worldwide pandemic. Right. Things are getting shut down. 2020 was awful. And let's face it, it was scary. It was. Because... Mm -hmm. Whether you were in some ways, and then yeah, it was whether you were worried about getting sick or whether you were worried about um, losing your business or losing mm -hmm. your job or mm -hmm. whatever, it was a scary year. It was. And it was nobody knew it was going to happen, mm -hmm. and people now this year things are going to start opening back. People just need to have fun. They need to. I think yeah. the word is fun. People need to go out. They need to have a good time and let right? loose a little bit. Because I think remember that we were made. For connection. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. We were made for connection. We were made by a creator to create. So mm -hmm. creating and connecting, I think, are important things. Absolutely. And you just did that today with me. Do you want to show everybody your sign? Yeah, I do. It's she didn't do any of this. I did. Wait, it's on video, so I can't say that. <laughs> it is so yeah. good. You, you did such a great job. Thank you. I felt like I did a good job. You did a good job. This. You did a really good job. All right, everybody. Well, we are so excited and thankful that you joined us for season two, episode one. We kicked things off this year with our Valentine's January subscription box and our guest crafter, Mr. Appleberry. Thank you for being my first guest crafter of the season. I so appreciate you. Anytime. You're a gem. We Anytime. love you. Love you. All right, y'all. If you had fun with us, we would so appreciate you liking and sharing this video. And we want to get these projects or other fun projects into your hands. So we want to ask that you would go ahead and follow Appleberry Zadek on all of our social media platforms. That's Instagram, Facebook, so on and so forth. And what you can look for is that 15th of the month. On the 15th of every month is when we launch our craft crate. The craft crate is our subscription box. Every month it launches on the 15th and you have a five day purchase window to the 20th of that month. On the 20th, everything goes into production. Yep. We start packing everything. They get mailed out or are ready for pickup on the 25th of every month. And so what you can do is if you're local, you can pick this box up. Like I said again earlier in the video, if you are not local and you are joining us from another state or another area, we ship. So we would love to ship one of these craft crates to you so that you can create and connect with us yep. next time. Right. right? All my Missouri folks. Yes. Get so, a box. It's cool. So sadly, I won't have you for season two, episode two, but we hope that you all will join us for episode two, which will be next month in the month of February. We can't yeah. wait to see what y'all create. Take us on your videos or your photos on social media. We'd love to see how you did your version of this exact same craft. And we hope that y'all have a super awesome year and a super great Valentine's Day. Cheers to love. Yep. Cheers to love. Cheers and to speaking love. of that, we love you guys. Thank you we for supporting you us. Thanks for supporting our small business. Yeah. We'll see you all soon. Yeah, see ya. Happy crafting. <laughs>